thanks for watching. And today I'll define the concept of a limb soup, which I'm not even kidding, is the most important concept in analysis. Other than, of course, the concept of a soup. Because what is going on? We've looked at sequences and we saw that some sequences converge, but the problem is not all sequences converge. And the question is, what should we do about those sequences? And for this, we'll define the concept of a limb soup. And by the way, for the beginning, assume that your sequence is bounded. So suppose Sn is bounded. I'll tell you what to do if the sequence is not bounded soon. So consider the following sequence. Okay. So it starts with four, and then it goes down to three, and then to two, and then it just starts oscillating between minus one and one. Okay. So this is our sequence Sn, and it just oscillates between minus one and one. Now, of course, this sequence doesn't converge. It doesn't make up its mind. But what we would still like to say is, well, even though it doesn't converge, it seems the largest possible limit of this sequence is one. And it's that largest possible limit that we would like to define as the limb soup. Similarly, the smallest possible limit is what's called the limb inf. So here it looks like the smallest possible limit is minus one. And the question is, how should we define limb soup and limb inf? It's very important to understand, limb soup is not the same as soup, because soup, the biggest value of this sequence itself, is four. But the limb soup is one, much smaller. The idea is, we would like to say limb soup is the soup, but in the long run. Namely, if capital N is very large, we would like to say the soup after capital N, that's the limb soup in some sense, which motivates the following definition. So it has to do with a helper sequence. So let Vn Again, given a threshold capital N, Vn is just the largest possible value of Sn, but after capital N. So what is this saying? It says, ignore the past. So ignore what happens before capital N, and just look at the supremum afterwards. So in other words, look at the supremum in the long run, and this is what the limb soup is. Now, Vn actually has some very nice properties. And in fact, to figure out that property, let's, do, uh, let's plot a couple of values for your Vn. So let's start at zero. So at zero, what this means is, look at all the, po the largest possible value of the sequence after zero, which here is just four. So V0 is four, so the sequence starts at four. Okay. And then look at V1, which again, ignore everything before here, and look at the largest possible value of the sequence, which here is three. Then look at V2, well then V2 just becomes two, and then V3 becomes one. And here's the interesting thing, after this V3, well, the supremum always becomes one. So you see, no matter which value I give you, after that value, the largest possible value of the sequence is one. So V3 is one, V4 is one, V5 is one, etc., etc. So the sequence seems to stabilize. Now, it is not always true that the sequence stabilizes. So it's just kind of this example where it's true. However, what is true, notice the sequence Vn is decreasing. And in fact, well, not always decreasing, but non-increasing. And this is always true. So note, 
again, an important observation, Vn is, again, non-increasing or, think, decreasing. And, in fact, this makes sense because, consider the following. At the beginning, we have a lot of values for your sequence. Okay. So, really, if you look at the soup over all the possible values, it's very big. But if you let telling yourself, let's restrict ourselves to huge values of n, then there are not so many candidates for the maximum. So in fact, the biggest possible value cannot be as big as all the possible values. For instance, suppose, again, by analogy, suppose you have a class, let's say, of 10 students, and the highest score is 98. What do you think happens to the highest score if five students drop out? Well, if those are five very good students, then you just have bad students left. So the highest score might just be a 40 in that case. And in particular, after the students drop in, so if you consider not all the possible values of the sequence, the highest score goes down. So in this case, the supremum goes down, which explains why your sequence is decreasing. Okay, that's very good. Why? Because since the sequence is decreasing, and let's say bounded below, because Sn is bounded below, we actually have that Vn converges. So and that was, remember, the Bonneton sequence theorem. So by MST, Vn converges. And therefore, even though Sn doesn't have a limit, it makes sense to talk about the limit of Vn's. And it's that limit that we'll call the limb soup. So definition, the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn, that's defined to be the limit of those helper sequences. And it's nothing other than the limit of the soups. So, in some sense. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the soup in the long run. Soup of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N. So again, let me emphasize, and then I'll give you an example very soon. Again, you have your sequence, and all this is saying, forget this term limit n goes to infinity. Just think n is very large, so capital N is very large, and all that you're looking at is just the biggest possible value of your sequence after a long time. That's all that the limb soup is saying. It's the soup when n is very large. Okay, and before I move on, let's do a, an example. Again, it's a little bit trivial, but consider Sn to be minus 1 to the n. So it just oscillates between minus 1 and 1. Now the thing is, no matter which n we actually pick, the largest value is always 1. So it doesn't even matter that n is very big. So for all n, for all capital N, this supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, is always 1. And therefore, if you take the limit of that as capital N goes to infinity, you still get 1. So the point is the limit soup, limit soup, as capital N, as N goes to infinity of Sn, is just the limit as capital N goes to infinity of 1 here, and that is just 1. So in fact, the biggest possible value limit here is 1. Okay, now, why is this so important? 
Because, remember what I talked about in the beginning. I said sequences don't always converge. Well, even though sequences don't converge, the limb soup always exists. And remember, we love when stuff always exists. For instance, remember, Supremum always exists. And remember how awesome that was, right? Uh, so, upshot. Even though the limit of Sn doesn't exist, the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn always exists. At least if Sn is bounded. But here's the thing, what happens if Sn is unbounded? So what happens if Sn doesn't have a ceiling like this? Well, then the limb soup is just infinity. We just define it to be that way. So also definition, if Sn is not bounded from above, then the limb soup n goes to infinity of Sn, which shows infinity. In fact, by the way, it's not even a definition. It follows from the other definition of limb soup because the maximum in all the cases is just infinity. So you're just having that. Um, all right, so that was limb soup. On the other side of the coin is the notion of limb inf which is entirely symmetric. So now consider the following sequence. So it starts at minus four and then goes to minus three, then minus two and then minus one and then starts oscillating. Okay, the limb soup just as before is one, but now we wanna define limb inf. And again, it's exactly the same thing, except this time you uh, consider infimums instead of uh, supremums. So just look at the smallest value in the long run. And that's why we have our helper sequence. So let uh, un be the infimum of Sn in the long run. And again, let's just plot a couple values of un. So u0, well, it starts at minus 4, minus 4, and then u1, again, um, after 1, you just look at the other smallest possible value, which is minus 3, and then minus 2, and then again, notice everything stabilizes. So after no matter which threshold you pick, the smallest value is always minus one. So u2 is minus two, u3 is minus one, u4 is minus one, u5 is minus one. By the way, u2, like the band. Um, and so minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one etc, etc. So in this case, notice that, well, UN stabilizes, which is not always true, but what is always true is that UN is increasing. So fact, UN is increasing, or at least a, a non-decreasing. And again, the reason of this is as follows. Same thing as before. So initially, if you really look at all the values, the minimum might be very small, but after a threshold, you're looking at fewer values of the sequence. So the minimum might not be as small. That's why it's increasing. 
So again, suppose you have 10 students and the lowest score is 20%. If five very bad students drop, then the lowest score might be 40%. So it went up in this case. And therefore, since uh, UN is increasing, it makes sense to talk about the limit. So let, so uh, by MST, the limit as n goes to infinity of un exists, and we define that to be the lim inf. So definition, the lim inf as n goes to infinity of Sn, that's just the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the uns, which is just the limit as n goes to infinity of the infimo, long run infimo of Sn as m is very large. And again, same upshot as before, the lim inf always exists, even though the limit doesn't always exist. Last but not least is a beautiful fact that tells you you never ever have to deal with lim infs anymore because it turns out that they're related. So fact, in fact, the lim inf of a sequence of Sn is just minus the lim soup as n goes to infinity of minus the sequence. And in fact, it's very reminiscent of the formula for infant soup because recall, at some point, we found that for all sets S, the infimum of S is minus the supremum of minus S. But in particular, if you let S to be the long run, kind of Sn, where N is greater than uh, capital N, so if you let this to be capital S, then this is the same thing as minus the supremum of minus that set. So minus Sn, where N is bigger than capital N. And last but not least, all you have to do, just take the limit as capital N goes to infinity. Also here, the limit as capital N goes to infinity. By definition, this is just the lim inf, lim inf, as n goes to infinity of Sn. Well, and this is just minus the lim soup as n goes to infinity, because we're taking a limit of soups, but of the sequence minus Sn. And there you go. So any statement you have for soup, you have an equivalent statement for inf. All right, and next time we'll do more shenanigans and more theorems with those. Thank you.